I got multiple senior software engineer job offers in two months with this strategy starting from zero system design interview experience, and here's how you can do the same. Hi friends, I'm Maddie. I'm a senior software engineer. I got my bachelor's in computer science and engineering from MIT and worked at Google as a software engineer. I recently left Google and secured multiple senior software engineer offers. In this video, I'll be walking through the most common components of a senior software engineer interview loop. System design, coding challenge, technical presentation, and behavioral questions. Companies will most often start by asking one to two 45 minute coding challenges to screen candidates after the initial recruiter call. And if the candidate does well on those, they'll then be offered an on-site with additional coding challenges and the rest of the rounds. First, let's talk about system design. This is arguably the most important round and can be used to up-level or more frequently down-level candidates depending on how they perform here. If you fail system design, no matter how good you are at the leak code style coding questions, you're not gonna get the job. System design is also arguably the hardest round to prepare for. Why is that? It's rather open-ended. There is no objectively correct answer. Interviewers instead want to see how you think, and even though there are particular patterns that you can memorize and implement, your solution will always be more freeform than your more typical leak code style coding questions. Interviewers might also ask you to deep dive within any part of your system and talk about trade-offs when testing your depth of knowledge. Versus when you do the leak code style coding questions, you'll often just be asked to get the most optimal solution and explain the space and time complexity of your solution. To be very honest, I literally started from zero system design interview experience. Because system design is typically only offered to mid-level and up candidates and I started at Google as a new grad, I'd never prepared for system design interviews ever. As a result, I did the bulk of my system design interview learning within the span of two weeks, but I do not recommend this. Please take at least one to two months if you have the time. The two resources I used for my system design learning and prep were Rocking the Modern System Design Interview and Hello Interview. I'm not sponsored by either of them, but I sure wish I were, as their resources were so genuinely what got me from zero experience to passing in two weeks. Grokking the Modern System Design Interview is a great first resource to use if you have zero system design interview experience. It is unfortunately not free, but for me, it was definitely worth the money. It covers the basic building blocks and concepts you'll need. For example, cap theorem, functional and non-functional requirements, databases, caches, queues, pub sub, and so much more. It also includes a couple of case studies on real systems where you can then see how the concepts you've learned are then applied to real life. Hello Interview has some awesome walkthroughs of common system design questions on their YouTube channel, as well as write-ups on their website. I really found their materials helpful because they not only give you the solution, their videos also explain what is passing for each level. So it's applicable no matter if you are mid-level, senior staff, or senior staff. They have a paid version as well where you can get mock interviews with real engineers and more walkthroughs, but I didn't personally purchase that, so I can't speak firsthand for how it is. Honestly, if you already have system design interview experience in the past, just watching a few of those YouTube videos might be all you need to get interview ready. When practicing your system design interview, I recommend having friends to give you mock interviews and drawing out your solutions on online whiteboards like Excaladraw or Zoom whiteboard to mimic what you'll actually be doing during the interview. It took me an embarrassing amount of time to figure out how to make a double-sided arrow during my first real system design interview. Please save yourself from making the same mistake. Here's the high-level framework I use during my system design rounds, which are usually 45 minutes. In the first five to 10 minutes after getting the question, flesh out the functional requirements to satisfy the prompt and then go into the non-functional requirements. For example, cap theorem, do you want to prioritize consistency or availability, reliability, scalability, fault tolerance, etc. Make sure you ask clarifying questions and clearly state what is in scope and out of scope. Do any appropriate back of the envelope calculations to determine metrics like the QPS your system needs to handle and the storage requirements. For the next 10 minutes, do API design. Write down API endpoints that you'll use to fulfill those functional requirements if your system is client facing, the requests and responses for those endpoints and define any data models you'll need. For example, if you're designing Uber, one endpoint could be a get request to fetch a ride status details by passing the ride ID path parameter. Its response would then be the ride objects, ride ID, driver ID, ETA, and status. You don't have to define all the fields within each data model here if you'd rather think about that more when you get to the database part, but it'd be good to at least define the models themselves. For the next 15 minutes, draw out the actual system design diagram building blocks and how they fit together. For example, you might include a load balancer, cache, API gateway, services that accept your API requests and process them, queues, Elasticsearch, CDN, databases, blob storage, notification systems like Apple push notification service or Firebase cloud messaging, and a logging framework. Finally, for the last 10 to 15 minutes, you'll want to deep dive into at least two parts of your system and talk about optimizations you can do and vertical and horizontal scaling. For example, 
What specific type of load balancing technique does your system use? Does your database use key-based or range-based sharding? Are you using asynchronous processing for part of your system? What specific caching strategy and eviction policy are you implementing? For fault tolerance, is there a backup mechanism if one of your databases goes down? How does the system handle the scenario where there's an edge case, for example, a viral video or a Taylor Swift contest without going down? Your ability to discuss trade-offs and deep dive as a senior engineer is what's going to set you apart from mid-level engineers. Next, let's talk about the coding challenge rounds. These are usually around 45 minutes each, and to be honest, there is no real difference between the coding challenge questions companies will ask new grads, mid-level candidates, and senior and up candidates. I made another YouTube video where I explain more in depth how to prepare for and crack the coding interview, so I'll link that there for you to check out if you're interested. But at a high level, you'll want to do a lot of leak code and learn common patterns beforehand, and during the actual interview, make sure you communicate with your interviewer and ask any clarifying questions, optimize your solution, go through test cases and edge cases, and explain your runtime and space time complexity. By the way, if you're doing a front end or full stack interview loop, you might be asked front end specific questions. For example, make whack-a-mole, implement a job board, or tic-tac-toe. You can prepare for these by brushing up on a standard front end framework, for example, React or Angular, and standard JavaScript slash TypeScript syntax doing a bunch of practice problems. I found these pages with a bunch of practice problems that I'll go ahead and link in the video description. Next, I'll go over the technical presentation. In the technical presentation round, which usually lasts around 45 minutes to an hour, your interviewer will ask you to walk through a project that you led or worked on. About one third of the companies I interviewed for scheduled this round, so you might not encounter this during any of your interview loops. But the good thing is, once you do the prep work once, you don't have to do anything additional. The exact project doesn't matter as much, but they're more so looking for evidence of your leadership, analysis skills, teamwork, and ability to delegate and perform at a senior level. I personally prepared a presentation since the project I chose had a lot of front end that I wanted to show off, and I found it easier to explain my system architecture architecture with diagrams, but you definitely don't need to make an actual presentation if you find it more natural just to talk through it. Here's a framework for how to structure your technical presentation. Project overview. Explain what your project is and why it matters. Tell the audience who are the stakeholders, what is the business purpose, what is headroom. Infrastructure. Give the interviewer a high level walkthrough of the components of the front end or back end of your system. How do they all fit together? How does the data flow? A diagram or two might help. Your contributions. Here explain what exactly you did. If you were a tech lead, say that. You should include both technical and non-technical contributions. For example, do you lead meetings? Do you talk to stakeholders and get approval from leads? In this section, your interviewer can see the impact you personally contributed to the project and your seniority. Technical challenges. Talk about how difficult technically the project was and anything unexpected that happened. How did you handle these unexpected challenges and did you design and propose solutions? This will show your interviewer your ability to solve ambiguous problems. Design decisions and trade-offs. For example, did you build entirely new components or repurpose existing infra? What metrics did you prioritize? I say that this is one of the most important sections because being a senior engineer isn't just about completing the project one way or another. It's about weighing the pros and cons of each approach and picking the one that works the best for the project. Impact. You can discuss things like what number of users does your project affect? Did it increase revenue or decrease latency of an existing feature by X percent? Lessons learned and retrospective. Is there anything that went wrong that your team would do differently if they could turn back the clock? What did you learn that will streamline engineering efforts for future projects? This gives your interviewer a sense of if you are forward thinking and can learn from feedback and mistakes. Next steps. Finally, if your workstream is still ongoing, are there any developments in the pipeline? If you help propose new features or considerations, make sure to mention them here. Finally, last but not least, Least, let's talk about the behavioral rounds. Like the coding challenges, there's no real difference between the behavioral rounds companies will ask new grads, mid-level, and senior and up candidates. However, your answer should convey a senior software engineer level of expertise, leadership, and problem-solving ability. I'd recommend making a list of common behavioral questions, thinking of scenarios that fit each, applying the STAR method, the situation, task, action, and results, and practicing your responses multiple times. Some common behavioral questions you might see are ones like, have you ever disagreed with a technical decision? How did you handle that. Give an example of when you had to explain a complex technical topic to a non-technical stakeholder. Describe a time when you had to work with incomplete or ambiguous requirements. And that's all for this video. I hope you do well on your interviews. If this was helpful, please feel free to hit that subscribe button. I'll be posting more software engineering resources and career tips on my channel. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.